part of what I wanted to say I couldn't deliver I didn't know any way by magic. Hi, I'm Sophia Jessica. Welcome to the fan carpet. Today we're here at the View Cinema for the premiere of Netflix's The Witcher. I mean, the story really is about Geralt, Ciri, and Yennefer, and they are a broken family. They're three people who are wandering the world on their own, uh, sort of determined to not need anyone else and not want anyone else. And over the course of the series, we see them come together and realize that maybe they're even destined to be together. And finding Henry Cavill, Anya Shalatra, and Freya Allen to play these roles, it's incredible to see them come to life on screen. That was very much always in the character. Um, in the books, Geralt is, is a contained type, uh, but in the framework that I was working with in here, we had three major characters introduced. I wanted to make sure that Geralt's essence and Geralt's truth were very obvious on screen. Um, he is the kind of character who, despite being a white knight and having very strong emotions on the inside, he hides all those from the world and presents it in a certain way. Well, what's so interesting about Geralt is he's very closed off. He's stoic, he's silent. He he goes, he has the reputation of not having any emotions. And I want, I think what's amazing about both Henry's performance um, and Geralt himself is they actually both lead with a lot of heart. They keep it inside. They don't want you to know that they have heart. But that's why people relate to him so much is because really he wants to do the right thing. He wants to be a hero even when he gets in his own way. I mean, I understand that she, she is so much more than a princess and she certainly doesn't want to be restricted by the typical con conformity that comes with being a princess. However, it is a big part of who she is. That's where she's been born. She's been born as a princess. She's looked up to her grandmother, who is the queen, Calanthe. And so it is, I don't think it is something necessarily to be brushed under the carpet. I think it is a big part of who she is. I think she has takes pride in that because of her grandmother. Um, but yes, it is important to see that she is not going to be restricted by the stereotypical conformity that comes with being a princess. She wants to break free from that. She wants to fight. She wants to get involved. She wants to raise her voice. She's not going to be suppressed or told what she should and shouldn't do. She wants to take her future into her own hands, which is what I love about her. My character, I play a character called Yaskia, who um, uh, is a wandering troubadour. He is a bard, a, a lover of the finer things in life, finer wines, fine clothing, fine company. And uh, he is a loyal friend to Geralt of Rivia throughout uh, the books and throughout the show. Uh, that has been an absolute joy to play. Uh, Geralt uh, and Yaskia as Joey and Henry has fast become uh, you know, a dream come true. What drew me in about this character in particular was that I loved the character before I learned that there was a show about it. Um, and it's, I've been a big PC gamer my entire life, big fancy genre reader, and to play a role like this was very much a dream come true. It's really to me about the three main characters. It's about Geralt and Ciri and Yennefer. They're a broken family coming together, and to me, that's what I wanted to write. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I suppose so, yeah. She, she learns so much about herself and she changes so much, and it's emphasized by her environment and by the, the brutality of what she's experiencing um, that I think that heightens her growth. She has to grow quicker than, than how she would have if she was still a princess. And when we started talking about doing this show, uh, some of the producers actually had wanted to make a feature out of it. But to be able to tell this story in two hours, you don't get to, as you said, delve as deeply into character. We get to tell really entrenched stories. We're with each of these characters for eight hours, and that's just the first season. So I feel like at the end of the first season, you really love and are rooting for these characters. The wonderful thing about Geralt is that by nature he's a white knight, but by nurture and life experience and everything that his father figure has told him, he's the opposite. And uh, to play that role has been very, very exciting, and I'm looking forward to playing it, hopefully, for many years to come.
You know, something that Henry brought to Geralt was sort of a stoicism and a silence. In the books, Geralt actually speaks quite a bit, and it was Henry who said, I just don't think he needs to say as much. He, can, he has such a screen presence, and he can do so little with just a gesture or a look, and we're really counting on that. Absolutely. You know, we get the fun of doing monsters and magic and all the battles. That stuff is really fun, but it means nothing if you don't care about the characters that you're watching go through those things. So to me, we get the best of both worlds. We get really strong character stories, and then we get the fun of writing, you know, monsters. I think what people really enjoy about Geralt is that he is quite complicated. I think that's the most important thing. He is quite a lot of fantasy, uh, kind of has a tendency to become uh, black and white, and Geralt is figuratively and literally grey, and I think that's the most uh, wonderful thing. It's really wonderful to play opposite that. Uh, every single delivery of every single line in each take may have a different nuance, and that nuance is wonderful to bounce off of every single day. You know, it's to me, it's a challenge, but it's just exciting. Frankly, we have such a huge fan base, and there's so much that they love about the series. We just want to make sure that they're honored, and the truth is, we're fans as well. So we're just bringing what we love to the screen. I wish I could. It's so complicated. The um, the world has the the uh, wonderful political machinations that constantly are going on. There are wars brewing and being fought. Uh, there is uh, xenophobia, racism, and all these huge, massive words and problems, and yet the story focuses solely on these people, very, very human relationships, uh, and is very insightful in its deconstruction of, of those relationships. I had a wonderful opportunity to work with some spectacular actors on this show, and it has been a real pleasure to watch these actors uh, express themselves emotionally and bring something special to these roles that will make these roles truly unique and truly theirs. Well, they are linked by destiny, and I think ultimately in the end, although we haven't explored it yet, they will they require something from each other, and that's why they are a three, because they're going to get something from one another, and they all have a commonality as well. They're all orphans. They all something in them wants a family um, and uh, I think I think that's what's going to be really special when we get to explore that. We do. Anna Chalatra, Freya Allen, I mean they are such incredible leads in this show and we've really brought them to the front and center of the story so that they shine as well. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends. If you're working on a, on a franchise role then you get a lot of time also. Uh, but there is something wonderful about long form storytelling and the opportunities it provides, yes. Wonderfully in this we actually have three major characters and uh, the audience get an opportunity to learn about all three of them from the very beginning. You know what? I'm just looking forward to expanding our family. You know, we start with these three main characters and you have some sort of side characters. By the time we get into season two, we're really delving more deeply into their relationships, and we get to keep building them out of season after season. Monsters are also monsters. Um, not necessarily humans are more monsters, and sometimes humans are more heroes. Sometimes the monsters are more heroes. Sometimes Geralt is considered a monster, and he's also a hero and also a monster. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. I'm Sophia Jessica. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more next time. If you dismiss it, Geralt! You will unleash true calamity upon us all. I'll take that chance. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you around Mallorca.
Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.